Good morning, everybody. It is 1022 here in Florida. And blessings to everyone. I pray you guys are having a beautiful and blessed day in our Lord so far today and for the rest of the day. Okay, so what I would like to do is I want to share some scripture with you and then we'll just have to see what happens after that. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is Luke 18 and we'll go 1 to 14. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said here, What the unjust judge saith? And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? That's a good question, you guys. Right now, I think that the answer is very little. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Okay, so why am I going through this this morning? Well, because it says here in verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? You know, it says that uh, we are saved by grace, which means unmerited undeserved favor we are saved by grace through faith faith it is not of yourselves like this Pharisee it is a gift of God so that nobody should boast so that nobody gets puffed up flesh and pride we're all sinners. We all make mistakes. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. And if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus Christ's righteousness that is imputed to us through our confession of faith in Him and what He did for us by spilling His blood on the cross, well, not a one of us would make it into heaven. Your righteousness will never do. My righteousness will never do. I am as a filthy rag before the Lord God in His glory. 
There is no one that is righteous. No, not one. Not one. Only the Lord Jesus that loved us so much that he came down off of his throne. He put on our sinful flesh so that he could uh, put us back at peace, right standing back with Father God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it says in 14 that the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And He did it for a reason. He came to fulfill the law because we cannot do it. If you have transgressed one part of the law, you have transgressed the whole law, and you are henceforth unclean. Unclean, an unclean vessel. You cannot stand before a holy, righteous, and perfect God can't be done it cannot be done we have to understand that we have to understand that and Jesus died for us first he fulfilled every letter of the law for us and that is the Torah the Tanakh the teaching also known as the law of Moshe and that has the Ten Commandments incorporated into it he fulfilled every letter of it because he was a Hebrew and he had to. Or, well, transgress one part of it, you transgressed all of it. But he fulfilled every part of it for us in our sinful flesh to put us back at right standing with Father God. God himself came down off of his throne. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He came off his throne to do that for us. Why? Because he loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, for whosoever shall believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So he fulfilled every letter of the law for us. Then he took our sinful uh, punishment, the wrath of God upon himself because a holy and righteous God must punish sin. There must be consequence to sin or else he is saying, go ahead, hurt each other, kill each other. You know, there ain't going to be no consequence. Go ahead. Y'all do what you want. Mm -mm. He's a God of love. For in John it says that God is love. So he is one for all and all for one. Don't hurt one another. Don't kill one another. You know, it says that we are created in his image. What does that mean? That means that we are created to be relational beings. You know, Jesus said to, uh, he said that he gives us two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and love one another. And on those two commandments hang the whole law, the whole law, all of it. So, he fulfilled the law, he took our punishment, and then he died in our stead, because the wages of sin is death. But because he had no sin in him, death could not hold him. And death cannot hold you either, if you believe in him, for what he did for us, to put us back at right standing with Father God. And the minute you believe in him, then his righteousness is imputed to you through your faith. And then you indwell the Holy Spirit that communes with your spirit, your inner man. The outer man goes through um, transformation. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed into the renewing of your mind. We go from enmity with God because we cannot uphold the law that is the mind of the flesh, into the uh, mind of the spirit, which is life and peace in Christ. So, I pray that you have listened, understood. You know, faith cometh by what? By hearing the word of God. The, the minute you get a measure of faith, I pray that you just say a little small prayer. You just ask the Lord Jesus to be your Savior. I don't care where you're at, what you're doing, stop. When you get a measure of faith from your heart, just, you know, say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you did for me on the cross. Thank you for taking my punishment, my death, 
and fulfilling the law for me that I could never do. I know I'm a sinner and I know I keep messing up and I'm going to keep messing up. And I need a Savior. And I thank you, Jesus. And that's all you got to do is just ask Him into your heart. Just ask Him to be your, your Savior. That's it. And that's it. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? That's all you've got to do. I don't care where you're at. Just where you're at, just ask Him to say, Jesus, that's all you got to do. And say, thank you so much for what you did for me. Thank you because I know I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior. And if you say that prayer from your heart, and you believe on Jesus that he is who he says he is and that he did what he says he did and what the word says he did then you are saved and you are sealed to the day of redemption and he is going to come back and redeem what he paid for with his blood he paid our he paid our sin debt for the wages of sin is death so he took our debt and it says in Leviticus 17.11 that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to atone for your sin. Jesus was the perfect Lamb of God without spot or blemish. He came to take the sins away from the world. I pray that you say that prayer, I pray that you say it, and I pray that you've said it. And if you have, please leave it in the comment section so we can all come over and just give you all the love we got. <laughs> and uh, we'll be so happy and so blessed. And uh, you know the angels in heaven are singing and, uh, well, praising God. I hope this has been a blessing to you. And I pray, and I keep praying, and I keep saying, and I keep doing, because I would like for Jesus the Savior of the world to come back and find faith in Him. That is my message. God bless each and every one of you. Amen and amen.